You're watching Dog Year Musings, and I'm Monica. And no, I'm not running away from some angry author whose book I've just reviewed. Today, I'm doing a book review of an autobiography of a jujitsu legend. Now you're probably wondering, wait, what? Monica likes MMA? Well, the great thing about books is that they can transport you to a world or life that you might never get the chance to live. For me, that is fighting. I know, I know, I give off the appearance of seeming really tough online, but it might surprise you to know that I've been told by multiple doctors that I should never do combat sports. So while I might never get the chance to do a flying knee or lock someone up in a super tight arm bar, I decided to do what I do best and live vicariously by reading. For this week, I read Free by Hicks and Gracie. Now, if you're a BJJ and newbie like me, the Gracie family is a huge family. Think like 18 kids and counting huge. They're known in Brazil, around the world, for popularizing a new form of jiu-jitsu and promoting a lifestyle of food, training, and self-defense. Breed covers Hickson's time as a fighter, his training philosophy, and how BJJ impacted his life. So first, let's do a review of the pros and cons of Hicks and Gracie's memoir of Breathe. As an MMA novice, this book is a really good primer in learning about the sport, as well as pivotal moments that happen within the family legacy and how the Gracie family gained traction and popularized the sport throughout the world. Cons of this book were ultimately it felt like a glorified Wikipedia entry. I got the basics, but I was missing on the juicy bits. Now reading a memoir or autobiography, specifically a celebrity so big as Hicks and Gracie, I wanted the juicy bits. I wanted all of the drama. Hickson kind of briefly alludes to these aspects of his career and life, but he never fully delivers. And I really thought this book was lacking, especially when thinking about the family dynamics that Hickson came from and the pressure of a legacy that was as big as his family's. And also, I really thought that this book could have delved even further into the impacts of Asian culture, specifically jujitsu, and how Hickson's family benefited from these artists who helped their family's career flourish. Ultimately though, Breathe is a good jumping off point into learning more about the Gracie family legacy as well as MMA as a whole. With a book like this that kind of explores a the ethos of training and eating and working out and discusses specific viewpoints such as embracing discomfort, I really wanted to take Gracie's training approach to the test, so I thought that this video would be a good exploration of training like the Gracie family for a week. Now you get to see some really awkward and embarrassing b-roll of me trying out the Gracie lifestyle. So I decided for a week that I was going to train like Gracie. Not like he does before a fight which involves going to a secluded cabin in the woods, barely eating, running a ton, and staring at a burning fire for an hour. I know, that would have been more fun for you guys to watch, but I figured I'm not fighting anyone soon, so instead I found a training guide for his normal routine. Now this involved more cardio, body movement, and exercises that really stressed on flexibility and mobility. Things that, as you can see in this footage, I really need to improve on. So some takeaways from this week were I really missed my normal workout routine. The exercises were more difficult in terms of mobility and I learned that I have zero flexibility. And that was when I really had to embrace the challenge of embracing mental discomfort. So I found strength the more that I did it, but I also was wondering how effective this routine was. The second part of training like a Gracie was to eat like a Gracie. Now, his diet isn't super crazy, it's, it's not calorically restrictive. The only thing that I found a little difficult was that Hickson stresses the idea of not eating added sugars. Ultimately, I didn't really like the rules. I felt like it wasn't individualized and wasn't really helpful for me. And I mean, I think that that's a fair assessment since 
Hickson and I have very different body types and are trying to achieve very different fi fitness goals. The hardest part was Gracie's breathing exercises, uh, which might be the most useful for people who don't ever intend to use jujitsu. Like any form of meditation, breath work is all about embracing discomfort and being mindful and present. Man, was it hard. And trying to do it multiple times a day for 10 minutes might have been the toughest part of the week. Even though I was alone in my kitchen, I felt pretty silly, which I guess is what Gracie encourages about embracing discomfort. Ultimately though, I wanted to see how a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu fighter um, uses the Gracie method and if they even still use the Gracie method in training and day-to-day -day life. How's it going, it's Miss? Good. So do you want to like introduce yourself for the camera? All Just right. Say who you are. So my name is David Herrera. People call me skinny. Um, I used to be a lot skinnier. This pandemic though got me a little bit big. Uh, but yes, I am, I guess I'm a first degree black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, I was born in Chicago. I lived in Brazil for seven years, a little bit over seven years. And I competed all over the world. And now I own a school in Albert, Illinois, Jiu Jitsu school. And yeah, it's just, I just built it like five months ago. So now, yeah, now we're here and in this interview. How does, uh, we talked a little bit about the Gracie family, yeah. but did the Gracie family impact your work and training at all when you were first getting started? Oh yeah, of course, of course. Uh, they were the kings of it um, back in the day if, when I was a white and blue belt. If, if any of the Gracie families you know, had a seminar close to where I lived or anything, I would have taken that, I would have paid that money to learn from the Gracie. But now that I'm more informed, I want to say after after getting up my purple belt or brown belt, which is mid-range, I'm um, in the middle between your white and black, um, we know that I, even though I respect their skills, that what they did for the sport, um, it's not going to be something that benefits what I want to do. Uh, because my school is, even though we do have some practical scenario, situation, self-defense, um, it's a lot of, it's based on a lot of sport jujitsu. So, you know, it's, but, but yeah, the, the Gracies are awesome, man. They, they, look what they built, you know, now this sport's all over the world. So, yeah. When you were training, did you, um, so they talked a lot about eating raw and like avoiding Ooh. sugar. Is, I'm guessing that that's something that is. So I was fortunate enough to have a really great nutritionist in Brazil. Okay. And she was one of the professors. I forgot that that school, that college. It was a it was a real, a re, real de Janeiro like state school, very good school. My nutritionist was the professor, or like the director of nutrition at that school. And her husband is a high level jujitsu athlete, multiple time world champion, etc. Well, I remember I asked her about the Gracie diet, the Gracie book, I know how to eat. She said it's it's it's, it's BS. It's BS. Um, yeah, clean eating, sure, but when you look at science, you know, and then look at that book, yeah, it's you know, it's it doesn't it doesn't benefit. Uh, it's better to look at to stay with the science, you know. My nutritionist said, "What I tell you to eat is not going to work for your, your for your friend." You know what I'm saying? There's different body types, different everything. Well, you need certain nutrients that I might not need, stuff like that. So, yeah, you can't just write it in a book and have it be universal for everybody. Right, and so. I mean, I think that also like kind of talks about how you were talking about their messaging of self-defense yes. and how you respond to like in a fight it's not going to be one size fits all yes. and being able to get out of a yes. scrappy situation yes another story um i have is uh i was in training camp in miami okay well, one day a couple of gracie jiu-jitsu black belts gracie jiu-jitsu black belts, not brazilian jiu-jitsu Gracie Jiu Jitsu Black Belts came to the academy, I don't know why, and they wanted to train with us, you know, and we had, it was mainly just color belts, not black belts, you know, that were training, and uh, all of us sport Jiu Jitsu guys it took, took down the Gracie Jiu Jitsu Black Belts and, you know, submitted them and 
even though we were doing some some fancy things that they've never seen before that I guess they say wouldn't work in the street I mean it worked for us in the gym and I remember thinking I was a purple belt on top of this Gracie Jiu Jitsu black belt and I was like man if I really wanted to in the street I think I could mess you up you know so um, after that day some of those guys from Gracie Jiu Jitsu ended up signing up at this gym I think the hardest thing so you go back to just starting starting Jiu Jitsu the hardest thing is, is was going to the gym during your first day you don't know what to expect it's a lot of discomfort that you have to overcome um, but once you overcome it and you start putting things together things you learn together it's amazing you know what I'm saying it's always like I said it's always up and down you always you can't you can't do jujitsu and uh, and be scared to lose be scared to be uncomfortable and stuff like that so what did I learn after reading the book training and then actually interviewing somebody who's lived a life like Hicks and Gracie. I've learned about the importance of legacy. I've also learned about the importance of embracing discomfort. I've also learned about the importance of embracing comfort and how much I love my normal day-to-day -day routine. And ultimately, I learned about the really cool community of people who are doing jujitsu relatively close to me. This book was a really good entry point into learning more about the sport and how people are continuously changing um, this really amazing art form. That was a little something different from this week, but if you liked this video and you want to hear more bookish content, feel free to like and subscribe. My name is Monica and you've been watching Dog-Eared Musings. Happy reading and happy fighting! <laughs> Thank you so much is that it yeah that was it. it all right well i appreciate uh is this uh is this for a radio show or what are we do what are we doing um <laughs>